Good morning. Welcome to Marty's Fly Tying Bench. This morning I'm tying an amber scud. Uh, use this fly on the North Platte, the Miracle Mile section of the North Platte. Uh, in this color I fish it on the Green River. I'll fish it on the Bighorn in Montana. In Olive, uh, I fish it in the same places, plus the Stillwaters like Delaney Buttes and Twin Buttes. Now I'm tying it in a size 12. I tie and carry them in 14s, 16s, as small as 18s for some places, but uh, this is a good size for demonstration. The thread doesn't have to be particularly strong. This happens to be in an A dot, well, uh, Danville's 70 denier. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do is get a little South Scud dubbing in amber. I'm going to kind of roll it in my fingers a little bit and tie it in somewhere in the middle of the hook and then stroke everything back. And work it down the bend of the hook. Now I can trim this and keep it manageable. The next thing I'm going to do is get some scud back or you can just take a regular old baggie and cut it. And I kind of like the looks of this one. I've, this, the scud back works well as well but something a little less than the gap of the hook. There's a lot of gap on this Dairiki 135. Once we've got that cut I'm going to trim it to a tip just a little bit. I'm going to tie this in so that a little bit of the taper is right over the end of the thread wraps. Now as I'm turning it, I'm, I'm kind of coaxing it with my finger so that it stays flat on the hook. There we go. And for a rib, I've got some monofill. It's monofilament on a spool. It's uh, about 5x. You could use some tippet straight off of your fishing spool. This is just a little less expensive. Yeah, it's made for tying rather than strength and stretch and all the things that you want out of your fishing tippet. Now see I tied this so that it's not quite all the way back to the end of the thread. I want to get a turn of dubbing behind it. You usually put the dubbing on in a couple of layers. And we're going to tease this out as legs so I don't have to dub it nearly as tight as, as if I was making a mayfly body or something. But get it dubbed on there. Now that bare part of the hook is going to be important, so make sure you don't dub too close to the eye here. I'm going to come back until I get to that monofilament, then I'm going to make a turn or two behind the monofilament. Now I'm going to get a little more dubbing. And with this one, I'm going to create a little bit of shape. I want it a little bit thicker in the middle and thin out on the ends. That's a good shape right there. I'm going to pull my baggie over the top, stretching it just very gently, and go over it loose with your thread so that you can keep it on top. And then look at each side and see if the baggies going down about the same distance. And at this point I can whip finish my thread that broke so let's salvage it. No big deal. Trim the baggie. Now, the reason the monofilament has a turn of dubbing behind it is so you can make this first 
rib jump right up onto the vinyl. And I'm going to make six or seven segments. And when I get up here to that portion where I made a whip finish with the thread, I'm just going to whip finish with the monofilament. Now, I don't have very many of these come apart, but uh, I do put a drop of head cement or vinyl cement or something on, on that eye. Now, this looks pretty skinny, but once you get a little Velcro after it, Skinnier than a lot of scuds you'll buy in the fly shops, but uh, this will work well for me. Amber scud.